what are you doing at? <laughs> that is so cute. All right, more on that. Y'all are all ready to roll. Hey, everybody. Wow, look, they're super documenting it. Good yeah. morning. <laughs> welcome good things welcome to, to Anne. <laughs> I just laughed for a minute. Welcome to the Canyana <laughs> Center for the Arts, y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. You can I just great. briefly wanted to thank y'all for coming. I'm the visual arts director, Jake Falk. Um, we've got a great panel. I'm gonna let Herman introduce everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got a great <laughs> panel, um, and Herman's gonna moderate for us. Um, we're gonna cover the history of the Louisiana Trail Riders, and, and um, I want to thank Jeremiah for an amazing show that's been here for, since January, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, actually next week is the last week that you get to catch it. Uh, Art Walk is next Saturday, so a week from today, um, and we've got a few different shows opening up, but this will be the closing celebration of it, um, so... AOC is recording, so this is going to be saved for posterity, and we'll be able to um, check it out online and uh, on their channel. Um, what else? I want to thank everybody for coming, and I want to thank AOC, of course, for recording. Um, there's free coffee, and we're going to run till about 11 o'clock, and then Herman's got to go do his radio show. We yeah. all know about Zodiac. So he's going to end up booking out of here, but we'll stick around and kind of chat and uh, continue having some coffee and then tune in to Herman um, a little later. So. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Herman. All right, Jay. Thank, thank you, panel. Thank you so much, and thank you all for coming out. I'll be the moderator today. I'm Herman Fuselet, Executive Director of St. Landry Parish Tourist Commission. I do freelance writing when I can about music and entertainment, and I have the, the Zodico Stomp, which starts in about two hours, 88.7 FM, like I like to say. Music so good, politicians, beauticians, even clientele riding with the morticians. They all tune into the Zodico Stomp. So y'all listening, I have a lot of fun. <laughs> I'd like to ask all our panelists to introduce themselves, who you are, where you're from, what do you do? Starting with this guy. <laughs> My name's Paul Scott, and um, I do a lot of this and a lot of that. Um, from? Uh, from Opelousas, Louisiana. Uh, born on a hill, uh, we call it. Uh, did a lot of uh, uh, Zydeco music back in the day, uh, a lot of promotion. Don't play an instrument. Don't own a horse. Don't yeah. own a saddle. But I do a lot of promotion, and I do a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, placing of these items where they need to be. Um, started working 19 years old, I think, doing a, a plays on Zydeco Festival. Did the programming and the technical Right when work. it started in Right when it started. And uh, did that for a long time. And um, uh, Holy Ghost Creole Festival, uh, on the board for Festival International for like 20 years. Um, and uh, right now we're uh, working with uh, Step and Strut. Um, and trail rides in South Louisiana and trying to uh, uh, re-image and reshape them and uh, document them. Very good. Jeremiah? Uh, Jeremiah Aries, and I grew up in Kansas originally, and I've been in Louisiana since 2006, and I came down to uh, the state to teach at LSU, where I teach photography. And uh, this is the first project that I've done here in Louisiana, and uh, I'm a photographer. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you. Latoya? Yeah, I'm Latoya Alexander. I'm originally from Generet, Louisiana, which is about 45 minutes from here. And um, I'm, I, like, I like horses. I grew up uh, on a farm, and this is, this is where it's led me. Uh, I'm raising my kids doing the same thing. So. But you'll hear a little more about it when we start talking about the horses. Um, hi, my name's Gwenny. Um, I'm from the UK, you can probably hear that. Uh, and uh, I'm doing um, my PhD um, at the University of Oxford. Um, my background's in anthropology, but um, I'm writing my doctorate about trail riding and about Zydeco music. Um, and so I've been living uh, in southwest Louisiana for the last year and attending trail rides every possible weekend <laughs> <laughs> that I can. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for being here. And I, I'd like to start off with just a basic question, mainly for Paul and Latoya. 
what is a trail ride? Because unless people follow Zodico or part of the Creole community, so many people don't know. And it's something that happens almost every weekend that can be maybe a couple of hundred people at a trail ride yeah. or five, 10,000 people at a trail ride. But still, yeah. it's, it's kind of hidden underneath the surface in so many ways. Yeah, uh, trail riding is when our, our Creole culture, we grew up as kids, um, like just in fields, riding horses, and you have friends that do the exact same thing. So we all get together with horses and wagons and uh, a lot of beer. <laughs> and we, uh, we trail out with our horses, uh, horses that we worked all week long. And finally we get this day off to where this is where we all want to come together and, and be together. And basically, you know, it's just good family and friends riding the horses and enjoying each other company. Yeah. And there can be horse competitions and definitely yeah, we have a lot, a lot of, of music horse competitions as well. Um, it depends on what type of horse you have. Some guys have these saddle braids, it's like really fast horses. And then you got some people have quarter horses who actually work cows on their land and different things. Um, you have pacifinos like I own, some like just in dance competitions. Like horses do many different things. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And Paul, these are like three days of fun. Yeah. Well, sure. you know, one Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, one, yeah it's, it's primal. It's a. Uh, um, If, if you if you layer it, uh, horse. I mean, since you know, Egyptian times, there were horses. People rode horses. You got here, you went there. You know, as soon as we could, you know, figure this animal liked us and didn't mind us riding it, we rode them and got mm -hmm. on them and did different things. You know, uh, 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 um, uh, horses were the first internet. You know, you went here, <laughs> the internet, the internet. So you rode horses. So. The, the tra what, what we do now with the trail rides are post necessity of a horse. You know, as soon as the truck came out, well, the horse became a luxury, um, but still needed and kept it, and kept it, kept it involved. So the, uh, the, the the trail riding is a byproduct of us getting around, people getting around, black, white, Indian, Native American. Let me make a difference. You, you rode a horse because horses liked the humans on their backs, and we rode them around. Um, you know, I, I guess I was in the the trail riding uh, 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 culture way before I knew it because my uh, uh, grandparents, we owned uh, uh, some land in Notlinville, Louisiana, which my grandfather's grandfather bought. Um, so we still got our manager now. And uh, I remember me coming up, he had horses in the pasture. Mm -hmm. He had a horse pasture and he had cow pasture. And you didn't let them mix, you had the mules mm -hmm. and everything like that. So mm -hmm. they all rode, but mm -hmm. they never had organized rides. Yeah. But you would ride from this neighbor to that neighbor, and then yeah. you go to here and you go around, and you come on back and you put the horse up. Um, uh, and if the mule was sick, you saddle up the horse and he was plowing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it, and it, and it grew into, hey, I got five, you going here. I'm not doing anything, I just came from offshore. We going to ride, I still got my horses. Because I mean, it, it, to keep, and Dave couldn't make it, who's Dave LaMail, one of my good friends, uh, He's the originator of Step and Strut. Uh, he's also a horse breeder, uh, um, a saddle, um, a stable guy, and um, does the whole thing. Also a truck driver. Uh, but uh, you know, his big thing is, you know, you, it, it's like having kids. You gotta, you, they eat before you eat. You know, bottom line. And they eat, and they eat very, very well. Uh, uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a great continuation of what was pre-trail rides. Yeah. Taking care of horses, riding horses, uh, yes, we've uh, had some uh, 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 changing into what a trail ride is, uh, but it's still basically primal of, of getting on a horse and going out in the woods and yeah. doing your thing. Yeah. And you're going to see some stuff in the videos that, that we, uh, you know, the, the, the new way yeah. uh, of, of what's going on. And just briefly talk about the, the ride you and Dave LaMel organized, Step and Strut, because it's like the granddaddy. You talk five, ten thousand people for three days in a row. It, Y'all have to take a break. It's gotten so huge. Well, Papa is on vacation right now. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, Step and Strut uh, right now is in its 22nd year uh, of, of doing trail rides. Started in Leonville, Louisiana at the IFBS Lodge. Um, and um, talk about culture. IFBS Lodge in Leonville, Louisiana. Uh, inseparable Friends Society. Yeah, Benevolent Society. Be Benevolent Society. Uh, the reason for these societies um, a, a black man could not buy life insurance 
in the turn of the century. You couldn't buy life insurance. So you got groups that got together, put a little money in the pot, and everybody. You got IFBS, you got mm -hmm. True Friends, you got uh, 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 the one in LaPointe, all these different associations. Just so happened, these are some of the same places that you got a lot of rides at mm -hmm. that, that gave their thing. Mm -hmm. So they were in the culture, in the country, and that's what they started. And it just kept going bigger and bigger. I'm, when I, when I started doing production for festivals and stuff like that, and, you know, uh, Zydeco Festival and Plaisance, which we didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> but we kept, you know, going to other festivals and stealing their ideas as to staging and sound and production and ad and stuff like that. And Dave was a, the original sound man, actually, for Bojot. I forgot about that, yeah. He was the original sound man, sound engineer for Bojot, and then he just took that and did it and, and was a rider. And the culture that came up in trail ride community was that if I give a ride, you give a ride, and I don't go to your ride, I can't expect you to come to my ride. And people, and yeah, people really don't believe that that affects your ride. It did, it did. Dave used to do three rides or four rides in a weekend. South Louisiana, Texas, North Texas, and come on back mm -hmm. every weekend. Yeah. Every weekend. So you're talking. And right now, I pulled up the list right now. There's um, the big associations around here are All About Us, mm -hmm. which is Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge to the Mississippi State Line. Um, there's uh, Trail Ride Saloon, a trail association north of Alexandria, all the way to to the, to the Shreveport line. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Rainbow down here. You've got East Texas to Austin, um, another association. Then you got um, Austin, I mean, uh, uh, Houston to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And when he means association, like for example, my family is, my club is called the Double E Riders. And my family may be made of five to, five to 20 people, family and friends of my, of my club. But on an association, you might have 49 to 50 clubs. So each club might contain between five and 50 members. So at the end of the year, all the clubs, which you see is on the back wall, like all those names back there, we all meet up to go to his ride, which is Step and Strike. And we have a really good time. It's normally from Friday to Sunday. We camp, we eat, we cook our door on hot burners, which is the, one of the best parts of the ride. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, Latoya, how does this stay so hidden with thousands of people taking part and then so many other people but, don't know But, you know, about it's, it. like, it's like horse people know horse people, yeah. you know, yeah. just like yeah. any, any other type of thing mm -hmm. that's going on. So horse people communicate all during the week. You, you going to this ride, you going to call your friend. You going to this ride this weekend coming up, you know, that, that's how we communicate. Yeah. Besides Facebook and the different ads that's out there. But uh, horse people know horse people. Yeah. In, fact, yeah. in fact, right now, I just told Herman about one. It's called uh, Trail Ride Saloon. And that was by a guy named Andre Harris, who was in Shreveport, Alexandria, Louisiana. It's a Facebook page. It's a Facebook yeah. page where he, if, if you got a ride, you send it to, to Andre. I got a ride, you send it to Andre. Andre puts them all together. And that's just one of the pages. Mm -hmm. um, I think today there's a ride at the uh, Center. Yeah, in Lauraville. Yeah, in Lauraville. There's a ride in Ferguson, Louisiana, okay. which is 10 miles north of Mansfield, mm -hmm. which is almost Shreveport. There's another ride going to be in... Um, uh, there's a ride in Greensburg, other side of Greensburg, Louisiana. Um, there's two in Texas tonight, and then uh, Brian Jack's playing in Opelousas. We got Zodico in Opelousas. Hey, Go hey. hey. Long. That's right. That's, I think the the, 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 the bishop coming up um, uh, because uh, you know it, it's going through some some rigmaroles. So there's a lot of, but the rides I just mentioned, that's all going on now. The, I, the uh, 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 All About Us Trail Ride Association just did their list, and um, uh, Miss Sheila Flowers, really good, good group of ladies out there, um, and she just sent me her list. Her list is right at 40 rides. That's just All About Us. Yeah. Ha haven't even seen North Louisiana, wow. haven't seen Dallas Association, haven't seen Houston, yeah. and that's just that. I never saw Oklahoma, and never saw Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Now that's this side, and we're gonna show you our last video. Uh, we're gonna show you where I've also got the list for North and South Carolina. So there's there's an association out there, but we're gonna explain the, yeah, okay. the, the, that thing later yeah. on. But Jeremiah and Gwenny, yeah. how did y'all come across trail rides and get involved in this? 
At a trail ride. <laughs> at a trail ride. Well, <laughs> he was on his motorbike. Yeah, yeah. Like, I stumbled across it. So I'm, I'm not from Louisiana. It was a culture that was completely unknown to me. And uh, I also like being out in the country on the weekends, and I do it on the motorcycle. But I was riding, and I, I saw a, a ride coming down the highway, and it was a little two-lane road. And I was took up both lanes and I was like, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> so I, I pulled over to the side and I'm just watching all these people on horses go by and music is playing yeah. and everybody's having a good time. Everybody and I'm just on. like, it's like a rolling party. <laughs> and I'm just, and, and you know, great. I'm so grateful that there's a gentleman at the end, his name was Henry, and he just kind of waved me along. He saw that I was interested. I had a camera with me, thank goodness. And I took a few <laughs> pictures as people were rolling by. And so I thought, well, immediately, I'm not going to have another opportunity like this again. You know, this is uh, really wonderful. And so I turned around and I joined them and I made a few photographs that day. But more than anything else, I got an opportunity to get to know people that, uh, that day. So uh, it was already towards the end of the afternoon. It was more winter time, so the sun was going down. There wasn't much light left, but we got to the end of the ride. And at this point, it's already starting to get dark. Uh, and uh, Henry starts introducing me to folks. And oh, I'm just so curious about this world. And everybody was so uh, gracious. And I asked if this is something they did very often, if they you know, do this on a regular basis. They said, we do this every week. So every uh, I was yeah. like, well, <laughs> is this something you would mind if I come out and join you guys again? And uh, they said, yeah, here's a. Here's a number, call this, and we'll give you directions to the next week's ride. And that started off uh, about four and a half years of uh, uh, riding with uh, various trail riding clubs in southwest Louisiana here and photographing for the work that you see in the gallery today. And, yeah. and just, just to interrupt, show you how, how um, you can, you can uh, if you throw something away and somebody picks it up, don't get mad. It was trash to you, it's good to them. Uh, this week is Houston Livestock Rodeo. Mm -hmm. This month is Houston Livestock Rodeo. Uh, we stayed in that Um The seven day ride was last week. Um, they do a seven day ride in Houston. I think it's from North Houston. They, drive, they ride all the way down, then you ride on the highways. Horses are legal to ride in the state of Texas on the road. Let me tell you right, you gotta give them the right. So they ride the seven day ride, they stop. Of course you, you ride four or five hours, you stop. There's a seven day ride that rides all the way into downtown Houston at the Toyota Center or whatever it is right there. Right right there. Was out. And that's fifteen years been going on. So, you know, yeah. you know, so we got Festival International downtown, they got horses downtown. So and and you know how big Houston lost like a road is, right? So it's different it's, it's the acceptance of the culture in a positive way, um, sometimes it's hard to, you know, we, and space, some trail rides have gotten bad reputation, we got bad PR. Uh, let's not go there. Go for it. We'll talk about that, but yeah, let's, let's I'm gonna not say go there. Yet. The, the yeah. average trail ride, like, like to, say we, we camp out from Friday to Sunday, you can get a pass for like $25 per person, and if you, uh, you want to go one day, it's like $15. So I bring myself and my two kids, and uh, sometimes a boyfriend or whatever, but it'll be four of us at $25 a head, so you can add that up. And then you gotta add me showing my four horses, because I have eight horses all together. But I try, like, the average horseshoe is like $65 to $75 per horse. So I try to put my horse in rotation. So if I shoe my horse this weekend, I shoe my son's horse next weekend. My horse, my shoes are still good for the, for the following weekend, but it adds up. Like really, uh, it's not no, it's not a cheap, um, it's not a cheap hobby. Hobby, yes, yeah, what I'm trying to say. It, it, it can be very expensive, especially if you're a horse rider. Some people come to the ride and they don't ride horses. There's, there's like wagons you can get on with hay bales or square bales. I, I think you might experience that a couple of times or two. But uh, if, you, if you're not a horse rider, you can still join in on the trail ride and sit on the, on the, tra on the wagons. But if you are a horse rider, yeah, from paying for those tickets, $25 a head, to shooting three and four horses, which is $60 to $75 each, putting diesel in the F-250 truck to get them to the ride and get them back, and plus the feeding that goes on during the weekend, all of the different material you have to have to ride, 
it's expensive to be a horse rider. It's, it's not a it's not a cheap hobby at all. A lot of expenses. Yeah. Well, you, you asked a question about visibility. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm clearly maybe an outsider to the to this world, but I'm just going to give my point of view on it. And one of the things that I noticed, because when I was making the photographs pretty early on, and I was showing them to people even here in Louisiana, a lot of most people weren't familiar with the clubs, never yeah. heard of it, never seen it, and and so we're talking about people around Baton Rouge or around that area, and that was that was shocking to me. It was because it was. So I was a part of that world enough to recognize how large and how vibrant mm -hmm. and relevant it was and it was just like it, it was surprising to me that it wasn't uh, more acknowledged and mm -hmm. known mm -hmm. uh, and you described uh, the rides like going you know through Houston and going down to the, uh, the big rodeo that's happening right now and one of the things that I you know found I guess just really special about the time that I was uh, on the trail rides is they weren't really for an audience is they, they they weren't going through the cities they weren't going through a town because it wasn't for anybody else but the riders themselves. It wasn't a parade. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a parade it wasn't for an audience and so and, and that's one of the things that just felt really unique and very special mm -hmm. for me and so when I started making the photographs and I became interested in, in, in this culture and I started trying to do whatever research I could on my own uh, through uh, scholarship and the photography and uh, you know, looking up just to figure out what I could about it, I found very little out there in, in uh, documented in any kind of way whatsoever mm -hmm. and that also surprised me because I you know from what little I did know I recognized the roots of this culture is uh, runs very very deep uh, here and so that's one of the things that really propelled me to uh, pursue this in kind of a long-term documentary mm -hmm. project way because there was such an absence of of that history recorded and uh, I thought it was remarkable and uh, wanted to be able to contribute to that in, in some way. But. Which is a perfect segue into Gwynny and yeah. your research. How did you come across trail rides? And talk about your research. So. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, I'd listened to Zydeco when I was in college. Um, and uh, I was in, I mean, seven years ago, I was in a flea market in Brooklyn. And I came across Boozoo's um, Zydeco trail ride album oh, wow. and the front <laughs> cover of him with his accordion on, on a horse. and. Um, and after, I guess, some, some digging, had, uh, I hadn't really considered that the music would be closely, closely tied to um, a kind of very rural horse culture. Um, and I'd been, I'd been working in southern Brazil the year before with gauchos, and I'd been looking at the relationship between um, gaucho song festivals and horse culture, and so that's kind of really where my interest came. Um, and then... With, with a bit of googling, I came across Mark Sober, Mark Sober's photography page, and he'd posted a uh, the Rainbow Trail Ride Association schedule for for what was now six years ago. And I managed I'd, I'd been freelancing for the BBC, and I managed to convince them to commission me to come out here and um, uh, and and attend a ride and talk to some people and um, and try and kind of understand it. Um, and so. That, that was, yeah, six years ago, I, I turned up at Donald Ray's place for the West Side Riders ride, um, and um, I arrived really early. <laughs> there was nobody there yet. And I remember thinking, um, I was like, oh my, like, am I, maybe, maybe I followed the directions wrong, and I, was, I, was I had like a no yet. Yeah. <laughs> and then slowly, one by one, you know, the, the, the trailers were pulling in, and then just before my eyes, this, you know, this incredible scene erupted, and... Um, the kind of warmth and generosity with which I was received just uh, blew me away, um, as did just the whole the day, I guess, and this kind of deep celebration um, being out there, and it, it left such a kind of, I guess, a, yeah, just left such a, a kind of mark on me. And, um, and one of the things that I also just sort of couldn't believe was the, the care and the fellowship to, again, attend everyone's ride. This wasn't just like an annual event, but this was something that is going on every, not weekend. every weekend, perhaps in about five yeah. or six different places. Yeah. Um, so I produced this uh, little kind of uh, audio slideshow. I met Herman at that time. I talked to you, your voice appears in it. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then I sort of kept thinking about it and I wanted to go back to school and get my doctorate because um, I wanted to 
you know, become a professor and teach at university, and um, and I just I decided that I would love to be able to write my my doctorate um, on zydeco and trial writing, and I'm, I was very lucky to get a scholarship and be funded to do it. So that's what I've so I've moved out here last year, and I've been yeah, that's sort of. So where would this this research where will it end up eventually? Will we be able to access it? Or yes, or absolutely. Okay. So the um, the the thesis that I write will end up. Um, I think like most theses that are written by the Bodleian or that are produced for the Bodleian Library, which is the Library at Oxford, they end up in the Bodleian Library, but then they are accessible online. Um, and it matters to me that whatever I make also is is completely accessible to everybody that that's spoken to me, that shared their stories with me. Um, so I'm hoping to also publish something with text and images um, and talking to the BBC further about doing another, doing a radio documentary, so a longer form thing that then, which will be, you know, accessible also publicly. Great, great. Um, Look forward to that. That'll be yeah. Yeah, you know, you know that, that the irony of this too. Ye years ago, we did, there was a, um, uh, when I was working with them, plays on Zodico Festival, um, film crew comes down and wants to do film on Zodico music and stuff like that. And the producer and director of the video, of the film, uh, was from England um, and stayed down here for like three months. Uh, the name of the video, the name of the film is called Zodico Night and Day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zodico Night and Day. And we filmed, we did this, we did that and everything like that. And, and you know, we, we, he's sitting there and we're talking to the cat and everything like that. And he's a really nice guy, really nice guy. And we, while we sit there, we think, you say, what, what the heck you doing here? Hey, <laughs> now, Patasa, you, you wound up in Plaisance, Louisiana, uh, filming Zodico music. And um, uh, just, like I said, nice guy. And uh, it went, you know, through his, it went through Island Records and everything like that. So that would have been, you'd have been like, duh, you know, uh, that type of stuff. And he wound up filming some light stuff. Uh, I think he was one of the last guys that filmed uh, Barsek and Conray. Oh, wow. Mm. He did a film of Boss and Connery on their porch in Dural and everything like that. So it's it's just just weird how how things meet. Because while we're we're talking about you from London, um, uh, Zodico Kicks, yeah. that album out from Japan, from Japan, yeah. uh, um, uh, and um, just like you say, you almost missed it. Years ago, we had you know the first time we ever did plays on for two days, and we're sitting there you know, doing the whole thing, and it's a Sunday, we you know, plays on for two days, and a guy walks up. Uh, barely speak English, says, I'm here for Zodico Festival. I said, well, who the heck are you? <laughs> he comes up, he says, I'm Jiro. Oh, Jiro Hitano. Yeah. So Jiro comes up, Jiro's from Japan. Jiro's from Nara, Japan. Jiro saved all his money, made it all the way down here. Found pl This is before MapQuest. <laughs> you, had to, you, had to, you couldn't Google this, you had to find it. Jiro made it all the way here through New Orleans, Lafayette, the whole shebang, makes it to plays on, on the Sunday. Oh. And he said, I'm hit. this is it? I said, it was yesterday. It was over. <laughs> oh, no. A whole year. Man. So, but it, it, it turned out good. Jiro wound up at UL and everybody knew Jiro. And, uh, Jiro, uh, and that's how you, so, you, you made it. Yeah, I made it. I made it. You with, made it. With, with the you help of Google. It. You, 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 you saw the time in Jiro. <laughs> Jeremiah, talk a little more. Your photos end up in, yeah. in, in a book and naturally an exhibit here, yeah. but just kind of describe what you shot and yeah. why black and white? Well, black and white, it, it, it felt really appropriate. It, it's, it's hard to really speak to the particulars of that, I think. I generally work in color, but I, I think one of the decisions was made by uh, some of the color that I was uh, capturing in the images by the people at the front and the back of the ride that had on like a safety vest, you know, for, for the traffic. Just uh, a color was a little bit garish. I didn't really want to be uh, a part of the imagery, so I decided black and white would be the most appropriate medium to, uh, to uh, photograph in, and it just it felt right. Um, but what, what you see here is, you know, as I said, I was working on this project for over four years, and so we have a culmination of all of those rides that I've been on, but when I exhibit the work, I try to give the viewer a real sense of what it might be like to be there on a, on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon ride. And so we, you know, we kind of come into the gallery and you know, we've got uh, towards, the, I guess, the front, some of the first pictures you'd see, the gentleman saddling his horse. 
Uh, you got a DJ up there, and it's just kind of this progression that moves you through the gallery. Uh, the large image, which is occupying that, that full wall, that's at a place that's kind of midway or three quarters of a way through a ride. They usually take a little break, a little rest, halfway point. Halfway point. <laughs> and so uh, we were, uh, the ride was just coming parallel to the tree line on the other side of the tree line, and they started cutting through the trees, and that was a designated spot. There was a trailer there. There was a Zydeco band getting ready to play. And so, you know, that's situated about halfway through the exhibition and then we just kind of conclude as we move through. So, you know, although you're seeing photographs over a long span of time, it's really my hope is to kind of create the essence of what it might be like even on a single afternoon. And your book is available? Yeah, the book is available through UL Press. Uh, we got copies here today if anybody's interested. And uh, I, I was really grateful to be able to, uh, to do the book. I'm, you know, I'm I'm really proud of it. I think it's a it's a handsome book, but it's a, again when I was looking for information on this world, there really wasn't much out there. And so uh, you know, to be able to to preserve that, to put it in in a, a library and libraries across the state, and have that be part of a historical record and something that is accessible to uh, anybody else that might be curious and interested. And, you know, since it's been out, I, I've you know heard from people, kind of people all over, all over the country, and really all some people internationally that have uh, seen the book and seen the work and are interested in it in uh, one way or another. So it, it's 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 you know has that role I think of of a, in some way preservation um, and and documentation for people that aren't going to be a part of uh, of that world and who aren't going to be able to come down and visit, but. Uh, but I think it's important. It's an important national story. Uh, you know, mm. it's it's an, it's it has relevance to people beyond this place, and so uh, that's why I want to put it in a book. And, and, I, and I think Louisiana is just now trying to to, to, to digest this. They, they, they're just trying to realize that all right, it's just not a Mardi Gras thing, yeah. uh, uh, because you know. Contrary to what you see, yeah. what you see up here, you know, there, there's, you see 98%, you know, African American, mm -hmm. Creole trail riders. There's just as much white trail riders out there too for Mardi Gras and everything like that. They, in fact, today there's one in our places. Uh, here's the beef. Yeah. Here's the beef cook-off today. They have a trail ride too. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. it, it's, it's just managed in a different way. But it's there. So everybody wants a horse. Different cultures wind up separating themselves into different groups and who associated with what and this and stuff like that. Like you said, you got caught behind one. Yeah. And just think the person who stayed down there and get caught behind one every weekend. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so so he, 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 he's peed uh, from, from the fact that why I got to be, you know, why this thing. And, you know, my thing, like I said, I don't own a horse, don't ride a horse. But my thing when I talk to police officers, the sheriff departments, and this and that and this and that, I said, look at a trail ride. Oh, Step and Strut, y'all about to see it. Look at Step and Strut as a, as a LSU football game. Yeah. You know. You, it's once a week, you stuck like heck, you either, you got two choices. Yeah. Stay in your house or stay at Walmart. <laughs> pick a choice, pick a choice, pick a choice. And, 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 and it's over, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, us in Festival International downtown. Yeah. Yeah. You can either, don't come downtown that weekend or, yeah. or come to the festival. Yeah, get involved. So, so, so I'd say, I, I guess one other thing about, you know, my upbringing in Kansas and, you know, being unfamiliar with this, the, the things that fuel my artworks and fuel my research are really stories of the American West and thinking about how those stories kind of help to contribute to a national identity. And so growing up in a very rural place in the middle of the country, you know, uh, the Westerns were very popular. They've been very popular, uh, you know, uh, for, for generations. And those stories have always showed a very, uh, you know, particular kind of person on horseback. And it was always somebody who was white, and it was always somebody in the West. And so that's just, the, you know, part of the cultural imagination for what it means to be a cowboy. And, you know, the, like, you know, it's, it's a, it, the story is always more complex and more complicated than the way that it's represented in the culture. And so, 
when I saw this, when I kind of encountered these rides for the first time, you know, not only was this just such a stark contradiction to what I had seen and what I had uh, sort of thought I had known about uh, people on the horses here in America especially, uh, but then as I come to find out that, you know, these traditions on horseback actually predate kind of the, uh, the trail rides, the, the cattle drives mm -hmm. uh, that really gave uh, this mythology of the cowboy uh, from these cattle drives from Texas, from ranches there, mostly up to railheads to, uh, to drive the cattle up to the uh, rail lines to ship it out east for food. And so that kind of uh, uh, movement really, in a very short time, uh, created this mythology of the American West. And it's a story that gets told and retold uh, over and over and over again. But with each retelling, there's continuing continuous omissions from that story. There are people that are left out of that story. So even on those uh, cattle drives, uh, there, a, a good portion of those people were people of color, even then. Uh, and again, that's not a part of the way those stories are represented. Mm -hmm. And so to come down here and see this culture that actually predates that, and you know, so I you know, started thinking about this. This is really the first American cowboy is, you know, from here in Louisiana. And, you know, this is a thriving culture that's been, uh, uh, this equestrian culture that predates what our American imagination is of a cowboy by, by a long stretch of time. And so that's, I guess, part of how my interest intersects with, uh, you know, the trail riding clubs here in Louisiana. Fantastic. Paul, yeah. I guess it's a good time to show a little bit of the video. Uh, we have three. I don't. We don't have time for all in, of them. In, in fact, before we just get, like you said about. Yeah. In fact, we meet him, met, and you know, talking and everything like that. What was going on? And he said, "I said, well, where, where are you from?" He said, "Kansas." I said, "Kansas." I said, I've been "Weird." Two of my good, good friends who came down and worked the Peace Corps volunteers and plays on raid goats for us and plays on uh, from Kansas. So I said, "Well, when y'all be, I'll go back. I'll go visit." So did my research on Kansas, and one of the places I wanted to go visit was Nicodemus, Kansas. Yes. Uh, and they were shocked that I knew what Nicodemus was. <laughs> Who knows what Nicodemus, Kansas is? <laughs> my, Nicodemus, Kansas is an all-black western town founded by all-black former slaves that were sold some crazy ideas on land. They thought yeah. there was water, there was yeah. nothing there, but they kept the town open. <laughs> so the town is an all-black town of former slaves from the south and the east that opened the town when they had you know land grants right and they just you know, moved to kansas get some land there's a lot of land in kansas let me tell you <laughs> nobody uh, but they wound up there right. so the, the 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 chances are that some black creole wound up in nicodemus <laughs> is very true because the land was free you know, you, you, just, you just got it, you got it. It was hard to, to, to farm, but you got it. That town is still open. It's yeah. a national registered yes. site, a national historical site now that's still in existence. People still live in Nicodemus, they've some moved out. But that same example of Nicodemus is Eunice to Kendall. Mm -hmm. There was nothing, there was, there, was, there was nothing. There was no plantation, nothing there. But it was great prairie land to raise cattle. Great prairie land to raise cattle. So, Priests, well, during slavery, yeah. you, you, you had the option, people who had land out there raising cattle gave the option to some slaves, come raise, keep my cattle good, I'll give you a house and a family. Well, you bring your family, give your house, the horses and everything like that, and you raise the cattle out there. So you had a lot of people who just wound up in prairie, Jennings, uh, uh, Kendra, Amen. Eunice, um, um, uh, Law well, actually, go on. Um, um, where, where's Keith from? Swallow. Swallow, yeah. mm. Swallow Louisiana. This still ain't hey, holding that out there, but Keith's from Swallow. Uh, Leroy Thomas from Kinder. Um, Bo Jacques is from Kinder. Um, uh, Preston Frank from Kinder. So, all these Creole peoples from that, that prairie land who got there from their ancestors eventually raising cattle and riding horses in those areas. Yeah. So, that same horseman were former slaves who could ride a horse. Yeah. And not so much the fact that they could ride a horse because they were slaves, but the fact that that horse culture followed them from Africa, followed them, you know, mm -hmm. came across. 
you know, all, all Africa is the jungles. But you had that culture that came over that they knew how to ride a horse and knew how to train and breed and everything like that. And they made their living like that. This is Step and Strut. All right now. You gave him, baby? Yes, sir. Right now. now, one of these days, hey, oh, that was a close face. <laughs> Us coming out of Blaze uh, Johnson, Louisiana, the uh, Zadik Professor of Brown. Uh, but five years ago. Look me, look me. Yay! <laughs> see, see, see. We, uh, we, we, we gauge how we do step and strut is how many horses we put on the ground, on the road. Uh, at that time, they had a limit on us of 500. I think we exceeded, I think we did like six, maybe six, seven hundred. Um, uh, that, we, that they allowed us to put on the road. Uh, the most we ever, ever put on the road was at the racetrack casino. <clears throat> we did uh, 1,600 horses on, on the road. That horse that I was on, she died one month ago trying to give birth. Oh. Yeah, that was my best horse. Um, we're gonna we're gonna jump to uh, and just see how it, it's Nicodemus, Kansas, uh, to to all parts of the of the country. Um, when we were, the last time we was at racetrack casino, uh, Evander now, uh, just pause it right there. Uh, we had groups that would come from all over, all over, all over North Carolina, blah blah blah. So a group calls us. Uh, we open on a Friday. Friday morning, who calls us on the Thursday, says, look, we, we broke down in Mississippi, we're coming, can you let us in? And uh, we, uh, that's it. That's the right one? That's it. Okay. And uh, so we get a call, let me come in and we said, uh, look, well, come on, bring your horses in. They drove down from uh, Shelby, North Carolina. Their ride is 12 years old. They went back to Shelby, and this is what they created in Shelby. Well, they already had a trail ride group, but this is what, this was, this is the stepchild of Step and Strut. It, it's, and they do these films, they really do production, they got the whole shebang, they came out, they learned. Go ahead, crank the volume up. Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, it, 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 that's a clone of Step and Strut. And Shelby welcomed them. He had so many vendors the selling the t-shirts to the food. And it's it's it, it's an economic powerhouse in Northern Carolina, North in Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, Paul. In, in fact, they'll, they'll they'll talk to you about it. Do you know what? Do you, what kind of bands they book for this? Oh, uh, just a uh, uh, nose article. No Zydeco, no. It's just too expensive to get them. Right. Now, they are DJs, yes. uh, but they do a lot of R&B. Yeah. They, they got the... And we can dance. <laughs> <laughs> we can dance. The average band runs about $3,500 uh, to pay for a night. And uh, they got some... Uh, Enforcement. If you're not here, you're gonna miss the show. The show. People in Shelby never knew this was going on. They didn't. Have, they had no idea that this was that big on their property. The thing about the ride, though, you gotta be a good horseman, but there's no wagons on the ride. The reason why the heart, the ride comes out. Goes on a uh, public road, goes back in on the uh, 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 service right away, high line right away, and you cross a river. So the horses actually got to see that. It's a good horse, but not all horses like water. Go down through the water, uh, you ride along the creek, maybe 500 yards, then you come out in the halfway point. So you got to ride through water to this horse, and they'll do six, seven hundred horses in this thing and uh they're only getting bigger they're only getting bigger but we didn't bring them. we didn't give them the idea of, of a hospital trail ride grew up born the same culture that you found about 
that is over there too. Yeah. They just they just take it to a, a step and start level of just saying, look, we just gonna go nuts and go crazy and stuff like that. <laughs> we went to their um they, they do a Christmas party in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. So we went to them, uh, uh, made them a presentation from the city of Buffalo. Uh, they were all happy. So we were going on there in August. Uh, to uh, the first weekend in August to their event. What I'm saying is that it, sh it shows that this culture is is nationwide. It's just, it's like you said, it's, just, it's under that, that table. Um, and it's going on. And Which like, kind of angers me a little bit watching this because Louisiana culture, somebody else is taking it and benefiting from it. We talk about the cultural economy here, but we should be supporting this here. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen. Well, and, 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 and we're not taking it, no. no. Well, no, no, no. That, that culture is already there. Right. It's there. Well, that, they're, that, they're, they're running with it. Yeah, yeah. Here. They, they're, they're multiplying it, and it's... Uh, it's different. Like, like, for example, not to cut you off, it. a lot of people don't own property to have these rides. Like, you, some, some people have to actually go out and find property to give rides. Um, I gave a ride four years ago, and I own a lot of pro I own a lot of acres, so I was able to give my ride there. But some some of these clubs, I want to say, out of a hundred clubs, you might have 25 that actually own their property to be to be able to give a ride. The others have to kind of go to other people and use their land and pay for it, you know. And that's a lot involved as well. Two years you ago, we were Stepping Strut was uh, given at um, Fort Park, Beaumont, Texas. Um, after a contentious contract fight with uh, uh, Gonzalez, uh, Lamar Dixon, and uh, which is the perfect place for a ride. Rodeo Arena, the place is awesome. The place Lamar Dixon is off the train, I'm gonna tell you right now, huge, beautiful place. They couldn't understand that we want to rent their place for four days, everything. We want it from the street to the bar. And that's what I'm talking about. Y'all have faced so much opposition over yes, the years. Yes, yes, people, yes, yes, yes. Local government should be supporting this. State government should be supporting it. And y'all don't we, get it. We were down to contract was signed. Deposit was in the, the check cleared the bank. That's a good thing. Um, and uh, I'm on my way to go pick up my copy of the contract. And the manager of the, of the uh, facility called me and said, Paul, I don't think we're going to do this this year. Which, he said, I don't think we're going to do this this year. I, I pull off the road. I was on a Uber. I was I drive in this little pickup. I said, what you mean? He said, well, it just, you know, we heard some things. We, you know, we just, we don't feel comfortable. We da 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 all this stuff like that. So we're not going to do it. And hung up. <laughs> and hung up. I was like, wait a minute. So we tried to do everything we did. Just didn't work. That rapture of culture is they're scared. They're mm. scared. Shelby, even in Horseman, I think it's 13 men that put this thing on. Plus they do benefit. Their biggest problem right now in Shelby, North Carolina, is getting young people to follow the ride. <laughs> the average age of, over there is 45 to 70. Their problem is getting the young ones up. Our problem right now is holding, is keeping the young people say, look, you, you, you got to chill out. You can't, you can't. Well, from, from this, from this culture. The, the step and strut, we mark step and strut success by trash. I tell anybody, any, you know, I'm giving my secret away from, you know, a consulting company. You want to find out if the event is good, read your trash. Go out there the day afterwards and see what the trash looks like. You're going to tell what people are. We could tell by trash whether people had a good time or not. <laughs> we were in Natchez, Louisiana. Never knew there was a Natchez, Louisiana. Natchez. But there's one where we gave it a, a, a private farm. And events doing good. Everybody's rolling. The thing is just, just tan behind. And the, the mayor, she's happy to all get out, you know. And the event is on a is on river not river road uh, Cane River yeah Cane River Cane River is a two lane road and a small two lane road part of about that we packed it from one side to the other and we had one young, the next door neighbor she bought like four hundred yards of orange fencing <laughs> don't come on my property I heard about you <laughs> this sometimes ain't the best thing in the world uh, and fist it up so but you, like, you got you got to think about it you dealing with eighteen hundred pound animals. 
they're not going to walk in the street line. Yeah. So sometimes if you have a mailbox on the side of the road, that yeah. mailbox might just come down. <laughs> it depends on how that horse is feeling. You know, I have horses where I could put a two-year-old kid on and I can go in another room and don't have to worry about anything. And then I have a horse where I just trust maybe me and one of my best riders to ride, you know. So you have different kinds of horses. I actually had an incident at, at your ride a long time ago. <laughs> I was that girl that got uh, kicked by the horse. <laughs> I don't know if you do that. Yeah, you go. But yeah, so. But it's a trail ride. That's yeah, what it's happens. a trail ride. Things happen. And I, I got in a really bad accident. I have a ride in my leg from that. But uh, at the same time, with the cast on, I was still trying to ride my horse. <laughs> but it's that much fun. And I ran into my kids in it. Like, my son is uh, a senior at Acadiana High School, and my daughter is a junior. We don't play video games after school. We got a 50 foot water hose to pull to the water trough. We got horses to feed Monday through Friday. You know, so all that, at the end of the week, they're ready to ride their horse. You know, so it's a lot of upkeeping, but it humbles your kids. It's a good living. You know, it really is. And you know. Latoya, you bring up something. This is a family event, mm -hmm. but there's still a perception out there. These are where young kids go to fight and trail well, I think I think everywhere you go, you're going to have a drunk person or two yeah. that, that might cause a few problems or so. But that's any entertainment you, that you're giving anywhere, you know. But as far as me and my family and friends, we go to enjoy ourselves and have a good time because we, we put in the work to ride those horses Monday through Friday. It's a lot of work to keep up our horse. Mm -hmm. That's like another another family member. It's not just the feet, and it's the teeth, and you know, if they're, if they're uncomfortable with that bit in their mouth on the ride, that's a problem. You know, it can, it can cause a problem. So and, and, and just like, like you, you invest that, we invest, well, my side of investment is making sure you have a great event, making yeah. sure you have a good time, making sure everything is good. You know, we put a lot of work in, um, look, we did Step and Strut at Beaumont, and Beaumont's not an angel city. By no means, good Lord, no. Uh, but because the biggest fear was that something was going to go haywire. And if you, if you throw a feeling of, 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 of mistrust out there, sometimes it comes back at you. Yeah. So we do a lot of work to make sure the events are awkward. What we're just trying to pass down into a lot of new promoters, take care of your business, do your stuff right. Go the extra mile. And make get your sure permits. Right. Oh, yeah, make, a lot of make sure it's right. Long do, time ago, it wasn't like that. Do, do it. Do it. Do it right. Like, like, like you said, you went to a trail ride. One of yeah. the biggest things that trail ride is that you, if if it's to it's to to have the new cats learn the culture of everybody's a partner, everybody's your friend. You're gonna help everybody. Mm -hmm. you, you could not if you made it to step and strut. If we ever do it again, you make it to step and strut. You, you, you made just enough money to get your car there and you had nothing to eat. You physically brought nothing to eat. You will never go hungry. Let me tell you right now. Mm -hmm. they will, you just, they're, they're, if you don't want to eat at a, a step and stretch, you just don't eat. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you that right now. Because everybody's going to, you know, look, eat. Look, I'm yeah. cooking, I'm doing yeah. this, I'm doing mm -hmm. that, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, the hardest job at a step and stretch is, is a vendor. Because yeah. he hope he makes yeah. money. Uh, but we try to pass that culture down to a lot of promoters. Make sure you take care of your business. That it is about taking care of other people um, like you want to take care of yourself uh, you know I, for somebody that's been on uh, doing the was on the rise for about four years uh, towards the end of the time I was photographing I started to hear a little bit of peripheral rumblings you know mm -hmm. about some of the rides and I had never seen anything anything on any of the rides I'd ever been on that would cause alarm in any way. I, it was kindness, it was graciousness, it was generosity, it was families. I had never seen family dynamics in, uh, in the way that I had on these rides. I'd never seen generations of people so willing to spend the weekend together. That just doesn't happen where I grew up. That just doesn't happen. Uh, kids don't want to hang out with their parents, especially you know, they want to hang out with the grandparents in that way. Or even and, go outside. Or even go outside. <laughs> and you know, so one of the things that I was really struck by, and one of the things I tried to really foreground in the photographs were these relationships between, you know, particularly between fathers and sons. I mean, there's the photographs up here that I find just incredibly endearing and kind of imagery that just what it's just not a part of popular culture we just don't see that side of life in you know the larger media that we see mm -hmm. and so here i'm seeing it every weekend i'm out there on a ride and at the same time you know i'm starting to hear you know a little bit of grumblings about something else i'm like i don't well, know well, what culture, you're all culture, talking about culture shifts culture shifts 
you know, uh, I'm like, like New York, me and Herman, we joke about all the time about, you know, Zodico capital of the world has no Zodico club. Uh, yeah. but, and, and, and it's true, it's true. It just, the culture shifted the other way. When Slims and Rishaws and Papa Paul's and all this was just grinding it, I mean, just, just Giltons and everything, just, you know, dance after dance after dance. Trail ride was still going on. You know, I had bands who wouldn't, didn't want to play a trail ride. Oh, that's too dusty, too this, too that. That's, just, that's not good. You know, I got a suit on, everything like that. They wouldn't go play. You know, then you see Buzu with on a horse because he was a horseman before he started uh, 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 playing music. It it, 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 it marched. Now, and I'm gonna take straight up uh, 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 responsibility for for some of the, the the bigness and the big headness of the money thing. You know, that's what we did. I got to say that we took it to a thing of, of, of a $6,000 production stage, lighting, generators, you know, the portalets, the, the, the bigness of it, and then the use, you know, um, and just the, the massiveness, and you kind of like, you know, when it takes you 30 minutes to walk across the field for a trail ride, that's, you, you pack. And not just, not because it's distance, because you got to run through all the bag on horses yeah. and everything like that. Uh, we did that, but it, it, it just, it grew in that way, and it, it, it's going through a paradigm shift right now of, of, of how to grow and be on a horse with a self. But if Boozy walked through that door right now, he probably, he probably know the camera. You show this to me, be like, what, what, what kind of pad is that? What kind of, what kind of thing? How you write on that? I'm just saying, is that, is that much gap? Is that much gap? Chris right now plays with an iPhone and an iPad and a in wireless. Mm. Boozy wouldn't know what the heck, what, 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 what you do? I don't, I don't understand nothing you do. Uh, so it's, it's those shifts, it's those shifts. But we can make it through the shifts, we can make it through the shifts. Uh, Chris got a song out right now called, uh, what's it been out for a while? Chicken Run. Mm -hmm. Chicken Run is the most primal, just, just basic, tell you across the head <laughs> song known to man out there right now. It's just, it's just, it's just that much, it's just that, it hits you across the head. Uh, but Boozy did the same thing. He had that primal hitch across the head. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a drum, bass, lead, accordion, and we roll. I yeah. mean, you know, we tell bands, you, you got bands that get that. Well, we, I need this sound, I need this, I need, I need, I need 14 channels of this and yeah. that. And Boozy had a one head, it stood right there. He, he looked to the left, he looked to the right. If he wasn't there, he wasn't getting paid. Yeah, and, and he was gone. And it was it. Yeah. So it's those shifts that we're trying to make it through. And if, like in Herman's work, if the state of Louisiana doesn't adopt those shifts, Texas will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they don't adopt those and shifts, North Carolina and uh, Mississippi will. And I'm sorry, we'll have to officially close now. Our panelists will be here for further discussions, but uh, there's about to be some dead air on KRB. <laughs> oh, no. Jeremiah, how can people keep up with you and what you do? Yeah, I have a website uh, at jeremiaharies.com, but I also have a website dedicated to this project, and it's louisianatrailriders.com, and so I have that. And I just I also wanted to just publicly acknowledge and thank everybody that's here because as I've been showing the work, I know uh, the photographs are important, but I'm not a spokesman for that culture. And so to have you know people come out and, and be willing to you know give voice to that, you know, Latoya especially has been a part of several public programmings that we've done. I'm so grateful for Thank that, you. and it just adds a layer of depth and dimension that uh, we wouldn't otherwise have. And so uh, thank you so much for everybody's thank contributions you. here. And everybody's on social media. Paul, you're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Latoya, you're mm -hmm. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Wait. <laughs> You can find me on the uh, Party Animals of Acadia and I also own like a little zoo for kids. So we take the horses to birthday parties, schools, daycares, and you can follow me on that on the Party Animals of Acadia. Party see a lot Animals of my animals. Yeah. yeah. And, and one thing I want to say too, just right quick, as of course almost any culture, uh, if, if women aren't behind you, you you're dead. Um, but right now, the, the two of the biggest trail ride groups are led by women. One is Blessed Sisters out of New Orleans, mm -hmm. and another one is Heritage Riders out of Greensburg, Louisiana. Um, Blessed Sisters, in fact, they're so big, they got two chapters. They got one in New Orleans, one in Dallas. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if it wasn't for them, you know, it, it, let's just face it, if you don't get in Texas regulated, Texas regulated yeah. you don't get them to your riders, because kind of like, <laughs> they, 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 they milk it hard, they milk yeah. it hard. So maybe us men have 
beat this thing to death and it's time for the women to take the dagger yeah. over and run with it. And do the, the future is female. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give our panelists a round of applause.